We are joined by John Stewart himself. But who else would it be? <laughs> Fareed, it's nice to see you. Um, I love your aquarium. Thank you, have. thank you, exactly. Yes. Um, we, we can go swimming afterwards. Yes. Um, so I gotta ask you, it's a big thing in the news, Donald Trump indictment. There are people- What? Who, no, no, just <laughs> uh, stay with me for a minute. There are people who I've been who watching say, <laughs> the live cameras at the courthouse. It's imminent, <laughs> breathless speculation. So there are people who say, yes, you have to indict him because he, he has, in fact, broken the laws. And there are other people who say, this is going to turn him into a martyr. This is his right. path to redemption. Sure. How, how do you think about it? Oh, I, I, the law should always take into account someone's popularity. I think that's, <laughs> that's oh, I mean, what, what's happened to our country? For, it's as though you can't even commit financial fraud anymore. You can't, you can't inflate the value of your properties uh, when you need a loan and then deflate it uh, with taxes. I mean, uh, the next thing you know, they're gonna send you to jail instead of your lawyer and your accountant and your campaign <laughs> manager and everyone else uh, ar around you. It's, no, to, the idea that someone may face accountability uh, who's that rich and powerful is outrageous and this country shouldn't stand for it. <laughs> but, uh, but, but what if it, what if it turns out to be his, his get out of jail free pass, it's his path to people will see him as a martyr, he gets he. Okay. You're okay I with that. He, is that, I, he could I don't, become president again. He could become president anyway. Fareed, you, it's, we either have the rule of law or we have no rule of law. The rule of law does not take into account if that might make you a martyr to somebody. I'd much rather have the conversation be, what is the law? What exactly are we saying that, that he did? His lawyer went to jail for this same situation for a couple of years. So what is the crime? Is it a crime? The there reason- are people who say it's selective prosecution, that this would not- Everything is get... selective prosecution. The reason why Donald Trump became popular in the first place, and the reason why these populist movements is that the citizenry have become fed up with the lack of accountability for those in power. We have no accountability in our financial systems. We have no accountability for the bankers. I mean, our uh, Congress trades stocks with information they get making laws, and they do it to great success. And they won't stop it because they're the ones in charge of making the law about it. And instead of bringing accountability to the rampant corruption that is uh, uh, surrounds our, our government and our financial systems, the Supreme Court just changed the definition of corruption. Rather than prosecuting it, rather than holding people accountable, they just went, how about this? How about, okay, why don't we just say this? It was even better than that, was that they said, you politicians, you think that's corruption because you're engaging it, but we actually don't think it's corruption. And, and we're we're gonna politicians. tell you, don't worry about it. You can influence, yeah, Petal, yeah. as long as you don't explicitly say, this by true. the way, this money is so that I may influence this law yeah. specifically, and you have to lay out. Like, that is what has, the, the lack of confidence that people have in the system is, and you even see it throughout the media, even that conversation, should we, should we not? It's a, oh, but he's popular and then it might make him more popular, but not less popular. Did he do something wrong? What was it? Explain that to us. What is the law that he supposedly violated? What are the ramifications of it? Uh, I, I don't see him ever actually going to jail. I personally don't even care. I just want a system that somehow finds a consistent accountability. So in many ways you, at least for me, you created or defined American political satire. How has that changed? I mean, it feels to me like the, the, the stuff you did, mm -hmm. you know, the, the showing the video and then commenting, it's become it's everybody does it and it's sure. not even it's not even comics. I yes. mean, that's what Tucker Carlson does when he wants to make his points. Sure. He's, he's borrowing from your yes. playbook. Yes. No, it's it's a real delight knowing. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to arm the most cynical and worst people in media. But do you look at it and say now this whole thing is commoditized? You, you, or well, it was listen, I, it was commoditized. It, you know, I wasn't doing it. Uh, 
out of gracious altruism. I mean, we were selling Budweiser. <laughs> uh, it's always been commoditized. It was, I think it's, you know, there's a lot of talk of, so exposing absurdity or exposing hypocrisy, what's the point? Well, the point is, is that this is a relentless fight. They always talk about, you know, the, uh, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. But it doesn't bend towards justice by gravity. Like, you have to bend it. And there's a bunch of people trying to bend it back. And you use every tool in your arsenal, and none of them will be, uh, you know, the one thing. There is no panacea. It takes, you know, all those different things doing in Washington over these past few years gave me a great understanding of how things actually get done incrementally and, and sometimes in one fell swoop. But our country is held together by hundreds of really talented legislative aides. Their bosses, many times, are wind-up dolls who really don't know, I mean, half of it, if you go down there, especially the Senate is like an assisted living facility. <laughs> like, the intramural sports at the Senate. Gage. <laughs> So, you know, it's held together by these legislative aides that are relentlessly trying uh, uh, to do the right thing and by the thousands of grassroots activists that are trying to get access. And they're blocked by a moat of lobbyists and moneyed interest that prevent the people in that building from doing the work that best benefits all the people outside of that building. And, and, and that's the process. So you have to use every tool you have to permeate that force field. But presumably the people there who are Republicans, who are conservative Republicans, mm -hmm. those aides think they're doing the right thing and they're trying to get across their... Sure, right, but they're doing vision. it, they're honest. Look, if you can find honest brokers down there, you can work with them. What I'm saying is that force field around it is made up of not honest brokers. It's moneyed interests. It's lobbyists, it's people who are weaponizing misinformation and disinformation. And all of those form this, it's the most cloistered so you universe. Found it, you found you could deal with very conservative Republicans. Of course. Because there was some way to find common ground. People of good faith. Now, there were huge disagreements about certain things, but when you found someone of good faith, you could always get something done. 